Hi witches, so today I wanted to do the My Favourite Mages tag, which is basically where you go through your tarot decks and you pick your favourite um, card for each of the different um, cards. So for example, right here I've got the Fool, which is the first card in the um, Tarot Major Arcana. Um, and so just talking a little bit about why they are our favourite representations, um, a little bit about what decks they're from and all of that good stuff. So I'm just going to start off by saying that I don't have a lot of tarot decks in my possession anymore. I used to have more, but I actually got rid of the ones that I wasn't working with. So the decks that I'm going to show you today are the Everyday Witch Tarot, which is a Llewellyn deck, the Shadowscapes Tarot, which is another Llewellyn deck, the Forest of Enchantment Tarot, which is another Llewellyn deck, the Pythonic Tarot by Jessica Shaw, which is an indie deck, which I will link to, and then there are two more decks which aren't complete tarot decks. They are oracle decks which have a tarot major arcana in there. And they are the Maiden Oracle by Layla and Olive, which is an indie deck. And the Black Mirror Oracle, which is also by Jessica Shaw, the same artist that did the Pythonic Tarot. Um, and some of those cards that I'll show you, you'll see are actually just larger representations of her cards in the Pythonic Tarot. So let's get started. <laughs> okay. So the first card that we're going to talk about today is the Fool. So this Fool card is from the Everyday Witch Tarot. And I just really like this. It's like she's setting off for adventure. Yes, it could be uh, a little bit crazy. She might not quite know what trouble she's going to get into. You know, she's about to jump off the cliff. But it's that, um, you know, that uh, enthusiasm for uh, what what could be, what could happen. You know, she might fall off the cliff and she might you know, break a leg, or she might jump off the cliff, and then she might end up flying on her broom, like it's that kind of, um, you know, sink or swim kind of attitude, so I really liked this, and this is from the Everyday Witch Tarot. The next card that I'm going to show you is the Sorceress, which is the Magician card, so this is from the Pythonic Tarot by Jessica Shaw, and I just really like this to me. It just it embodies what um, magic is, is all about, like those stereotypical visuals of, you know, doing magic underneath the moon and, um, you know, the, the pentacle that's cast on the floor, um, you know, going out in, at midnight in the middle of the forest naked to perform a ritual. Like it's just that stereotypical kind of uh, sorceress, which I really like. Um, yeah, so that's one of my favourite representations. Having said that, I have another representation. Um, I like both of these, and it's very hard to choose a favourite. So the other one is from the Forest of Enchantment Tarot, and this is called the Enchanter. So both of them have been renamed, but they are the Magician. Um, and again, it's just that idea of um, creating things, um, you know, using your mind and putting your will into things and creating things. So I really really love this card. I really love the style of it, of, you know, the owl in the background for knowledge and all of the books and things. You just, you get that vibe of that person that knows a lot and can create things with their mind. And then the next card that I have, I'm going to show you two for this. And so this is the High Priestess card from the Everyday Witch Tarot. And again, it's very similar to the Enchanter card that I just showed you. Um, you know, she's divining, she has this knowledge, she's surrounded by books, it's just that stereotypical witch kind of attitude. I love that you've got the light and the dark on either side, the perfect balance, the white candle on the black candlestick, the black candle on the white candlestick. Um, you know, she's got all sorts of things at her disposal, she's got cards, she's got a crystal ball, she's got runes, um, you know, all of that. And then, I don't actually own this deck, but I have a printout of it, so this is the... So this is the High Priestess card from the Green Witch Tarot. I don't actually own this deck. However, as you can see, I printed it out and put it in my tarot journal because I really love this representation of the High Priestess. Again, to me, it just, it speaks of that wise woman with the knowledge and she's got the cauldron. Um, and it just, yeah, to me, I I connect much more with this compared to, say, the typical right of weight um, imagery which you normally see um, yeah so with my high priestess cards I really like the the witch element behind it okay and then moving on to the empress I've got two empress cards here <laughs> because again I find it hard to pick so this empress card is from the shadowscapes tarot and I mean 
it's purple with butterflies how could how could i not like it <laughs> um this was one of those cards that convinced me to buy the shadowscapes deck i just really love the the creation element um without it being a a pregnant woman um because to me the empress it's all about um you know being one with nature and still creating um yeah so <laughs> really like that one um but then this one as well it's it's similar yet different um so in this deck it's been renamed as the green mother and that's exactly what she is she's a green mother and she looks like she's you know one with the trees she's one with the leaves she looks like she is a forest creature um and to me it just it has that empress energy of um you know connecting to nature and um, birthing new life. So I really love this depiction too. Then comes the Emperor. Now the Emperor is a bit of an interesting card. There aren't many representations of the Emperor, which I actually um, enjoy. Um, so this is probably the one I liked the most in my collection, but it's still, I don't know, it still doesn't quite speak of the Emperor to me, but that's one of those cards that I, um, I probably don't have the best connection to. Um, but so this is the Forest Lord from the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. And um, yeah, I guess it's that kind of powerful male energy. Um, yeah, but so that's probably my favorite Emperor card. Then we have the Hierophant. Now, I have to say, I usually quite like the way the Hierophant is depicted, um, but this just wins hands down. I love how it's like it's it's called the oldest one and it's the oldest one in the trees and there's a teeny tiny owl in the corner and yeah to me this is the hierophant like <laughs> i guess i play a lot of video games and that whole kind of um that knowledge that comes from the wise one in the trees is just something i really connect with um and really enjoy in decks so this was from the forest of enchantment tarot However, there is another representation that I want to show you, and that is from the Black Mirror Oracle by Jessica Shaw. So this is her card for the Hierophant, and she has depicted Odin. Now, this is a really beautiful card. I've had this out on my altar many times when working with Odin. Um, I just love that, again, it looks like he's rising from the trees. It's hard to tell where his robes begin and the trees end kind of thing. Um, he's got his two ravens on his shoulder. He's got he's got the one eye, but this time it's on his hat to depict that he is he is the wizard, he is the all-knowing one. Um, and it's got the mushrooms, and I just really love the imagery of this card. It's very powerful. Okay, so then we move on to the lovers. Now this is from the Pythonic Tarot by Jessica Shaw, and part of the reason I liked this card um, the most is I love that in the background you've got like the weavers, and it just makes me think of how when when we fall in love there is actually an element of fate to it um you know it's not just we've decided to fall in love there is a huge f um, element of fate involved and so i really love the way that it depicts the fates in this card okay and then we have the chariot now the chariot is another card that there weren't a lot of depictions that i really really loved but i do i do quite like this one um <laughs> this is a very witchy deck um and so, yeah, there's a lot of ritual, a lot of that kind of stereotypical witch imagery in this deck. But um, again, this is probably one of my favorite representations. It's still, it speaks of movement, but it's um, it's very powerful movement. It's a very powerful card. And that's what I quite liked about this depiction. And, you know, it's witches practicing in a forest, like <laughs> very stereotypical. Like I, I do really like the imagery and the symbolism. But then a recent favorite for the chariot is the fairy wind from the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. Um, again, very different energy, but still very chariot. Um, I guess a lot more slower rather than the kind of fast pace that we used to, but still very beautiful depiction. So it's hard for me to choose between those two. Then we have the strength card. And if I'm being completely honest, there's not a lot of strength cards that I liked. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because I remember I was watching um, Samantha Menzo's video and she said the same thing. So, yeah, there's something about strength cards in tarot decks that just kind of missed the mark. But I do like this one because it's <laughs> that idea that she is, you know, taming the wild. She's able to tame the lion um, while, you know, controlling the tornado behind her. Like, to me, that is just, like, complete power. Um, so I really liked this depiction from the Everyday Witch Tarot. And then 
this next card, The Hermit, is probably one of my favourite depictions in um, the Major Arcana for the Tarot. I liked it so much, I actually have three different versions that I wanted to show you. So the first one is again from The Everyday Witch, and so this is one version of The Hermit. It's the idea that she's gone out into the forest, um, she's all on her own, aside from her cat and the you know nature creatures of the owl and things. Um, and it's just that idea of being still and listening to the wisdom of nature and, you know, turning inward. And so I really loved this depiction. This is um, from the Pythonic Tarot. Yeah, so she's retreating. She's turning inward. She's in the cave. She's, you know, looking at her life. Um, and so this is another really beautiful depiction that I liked. And then probably my favourite, favourite depiction... <laughs> Um, this is Hecate from the Black Mirror Oracle by Jessica Shaw. So the same artist as the Pythonic Tarot. This was one of the cards that she did actually change between her Oracle deck and her Tarot deck. Not all of them have, but this was one that she did. And I love this card. This is one of my favourite cards, like, ever. I have a print of this to have it on my altar. Um, yeah. It's that, that hermit energy is very strong in this card. So I love this card. Love, love, love. And then speaking of which, the next card again, Pythonic Tarot, Jessica Shaw. This is the Norns. Now I'm going to show you a bigger version of it because in both her Tarot and her Oracle deck, it is the same image. So I'm going to show it to you on here because it's a bit bigger. So this is for um, the Wheel of Fortune. And this is the Norns or the Fates. And I just love that she used the Norns to depict the Wheel of Fortune because Fate and the Wheel of Fortune are so interconnected. Um, I work a lot with the Fates. Um, if you don't know much about the Fates, read up on them. They are extremely fascinating. Um, I love the Norns. I love working with the Norns. And funny story, this card went missing when I went to try and find it just before it was hidden. Um, yeah, this this card has a mind of its own. It likes to, it likes to hide every now and then. Um, but this, I just again, I love this card. Such powerful artwork. Now we have the Justice card. Now this is another card that I wasn't too thrilled with the depictions in my tarot decks. Um, I mean, I do like this one. It's still, to me, it speaks of, like, it's got the scales of justice. It's got um, the butterflies, which to me are like the messengers, um, you know, the ones that carry out justice. But it still has a very lighthearted vibe. Um, I don't know. I guess when I think of justice, I think of something a bit more heavy hitting. But then I looked at my heavy hitting cards and they still didn't quite... I don't know. They still didn't quite match my depiction. So um, this is my favourite of all of them. But it's still, it's not, it's not a card that I am, like, head over heels in love with, like some of the other cards. And then we have the Hanged Man. Now, this is from the Forest of Enchantment Tarot, and this is called Suspension. So instead of it being that he's simply hanging upside down, he's actually suspended in amber. So he is cocooned in the womb of a tree where he is, you know, um regenerating he is um observing the world getting ready to be reborn and then we have the death card and the death card is another one that i'm kind of disappointed with some of the representations in tarot if i'm being quite honest um look there was another card i was very close to considering but um i didn't end up putting it in there's quite a lot of nudity <laughs> um it's, the other card is from the pythonic tarot um, but I guess the thing I really liked about this card is that it sees death as a rebirth. So I love that although she is dying, she is actually becoming the phoenix. And the phoenix, you know, they, you know, they, they catch fire and then they're reborn from the ashes. So I just really love that sentiment of, is a very strong rebirth energy in this card. Now, <laughs> surprise, surprise of my pick for the temperance card. Um, if you don't already know, I have a giant, um, watercolor illustration of this card on my wall i have a very interesting relationship with temperance <laughs> i need to listen to the medicine of this card a lot more but this is the temperance card from the pythonic tarot by jessica shaw i have this exact artwork hanging on my wall it's the original watercolor illustration 
it's massive you can see it in my um witchy room tour kind of video which is up um i just oh i don't know where to begin on where i love this card i love that you've got the two sides the night and day the lunar moth with with the monarch butterfly the day and night that that balance that alchemy oh i love this card so much <laughs> And then for the Devil card, this is another one that, I mean, I think part of it is the fact that I don't really resonate with the image of the Devil. It's not something that's really part of my practice or even part of my belief system. But I do particularly like this depiction, which is in the um, main oracle by Layla and Olive. This is the only card of theirs that I have in um, this little uh, chat. But I love that it's got the mushrooms and the broken glass because I really love learning about um, poisonous plants and the poison path. And mushrooms are so fascinating because they are filled with so much medicine and so much poison. It's that double-edged sword of they can be the devil. And like the devil, they have that energy of they will give you something amazing, but then they may also take something away from you. Um, and so it's that balance that I really love about this devil card. And so I really love the way that they, yeah, they depicted this. I also wanted to talk about this one because a more kind of stereotypical representation, which is still a little bit different. Um, it, this is called The Liar, and this is from the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. Rather than him being the stereotypical devil, is he is the liar. And I like that because I think that is something which is missing from a lot of devil cards in that there is that side that is very enticing they have something to offer you but then there is that side of if you take their offer at what cost will it be to you and so i just love all the little symbols in this card you've got the snake which is um on his cane you've got the little rat on his shoulder um you know he looks like he's ready to sell you something he's about to give you something but you know in return for what cost um the next one i've got two favorites for i'm going to show you my favorite for what i currently have but there is another tower card that i really love it's in a deck which i currently don't own i used to own it it's called the lumina tarot and i'll put in a picture somewhere to show you um but i just really love that depiction of the tower you've got the stones you've got the lightning striking it um you know, you can just imagine it all come crumbling down. Um, it's just a really powerful depiction. I love that I can just imagine the scene in my mind. Well, one of my other favourite depictions of the tower is from the Forest of Enchantment Tower, and this is called The Folly. <laughs> Aside from the fact it's such a beautiful little house, um, but how it's it's like a tree and it's it's come crashing down like it's been struck by lightning. But from that, you can see all of this life which is being burst. You're seeing all the bats fly out or the birds fly out. So what was crumbling has now been cracked open and all of this new life is coming out of it. And I think that's a really beautiful sentiment, the idea that only when the tower falls can we start to, you know, experience that joy and that fulfillment. Um, you know, the tower falls because it's not on a strong foundation. It doesn't fall because it wants to inconvenience us you know it falls for a reason and so I really love that message of this card the next one is I'm going to show you two again um one I don't own one I do this is the star and I had to use this um I'm currently working with Persephone um as part of coven work and this is the card for Persephone and I've always loved this card like I have a very strong connection with the star card in the tarot it was the very very first card that I ever pulled and I love this depiction it's just it's such a tranquil card and then the other star card is from the green witch tarot so I don't own this deck I have considered it but there's only a few cards in there that I actually really love but the cards in there that I do love I really really love <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I should just uh, bite the bullet and buy the deck. But uh, again, I love this star card. It's, again, it's very similar. It's got that peaceful, tranquil energy. Um, she's, got the, she's got the fairy wings. Um, she's got the moon on her, on her, um, her third eye. Um, again, it's just, it's a really peaceful, beautiful, tranquil card, which I really love. And then we have the moon. 
Um, this was one that was actually quite hard to pick a favourite for because generally I will love the moon card in most tarot decks, but this would have to be my absolute favourite. I just love the way that it's not a full moon, it's a crescent moon. And just like the night time and the life of the mushrooms, um, you know, the powerful energy. It's almost like the mushrooms are being directed by the moon. Um, it's just a very powerful card. I really enjoy this depiction. And then we have the sun. This is such a happy card. <laughs> you can't look at this card and feel sad. It's just it's such a happy, beautiful card. You've got the maiden mother crone energy. You've got the sunflowers. You've got the bright sun shining down. They're dancing. Just, oh, I love it. This is from the Everyday Witch Tarot. And yeah, it just, it speaks of happiness and joy to me. It really embodies the energy of the sun card. I love it. So I nearly forgot the judgment card. And the reason that I forgot the judgment card is that I had recently pulled this in one of my um, tarot drawers. So this is the Council of Animals from the Enchanted Forest Tarot. And I really liked the way that they flipped the idea of the judgment card. And it's the Council of Animals. They're judging you, you know. Um, and so I really liked the way that it's had a very kind of unconventional imagery and uh, it really fits in with the deck. So yeah, that would be my favorite judgment card. And then last but certainly not least is the world. Now this is from the Shadowscapes Tarot. And again, this is one of those cards that made me fall in love with the Shadowscapes Tarot of you've got the whole world all around her. She's got that mother earth energy. You know, she's got the moon, it's all there. I can just like the circle, which makes me just think of the world. There's a lot of circle energy in here, a lot of green energy. Again, it's just it's a very tranquil card. I really, really love this depiction of the world card. So that was my favorite tarot mages. <laughs> What did you think about some of these um, choices? You know, are they similar to your own choices or do you prefer different kinds of imagery? I'm curious to know as well in terms of your decks. I know that we all have different taste in decks. Obviously my taste in decks is very um, fantasy kind of off in another realm kind of, uh, kind of style, um, which I'm well aware of. And it's also very, very witchy. So that's my jam. <laughs> So yeah, I would love for you to also do this tag. Um, so basically you just do a video of yourself or even, you know, you could do a blog post where you show your favorite um, tarot mages and a little bit about why they're your favorites. I am really interested. I'm enjoying watching all of the tags on YouTube. I have seen, I know Samantha Menzos has done one. I know Eris Elizabeth has done one. Um, yeah, I'm loving it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.